Have you ever felt like, yeah, it's nice being part of the Burning Legion or a night elf or maybe even part of the Scourge? But deep down in your heart of hearts, you know that you actually identify as a night elf glaive thrower with new wooden rims and explosive bolts that can take down anybody in your path. Hey, how's it going, guys? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome back to some more Mountain Blade 2 of Battlelord. Today, we're going to be diving in and taking a look at the brand new update for Mount and Warcraft Reborn. This is the World of Warcraft mod. And in this update, we have basically got a complete rework to the mod. They basically built it from the ground up with a much larger map. This map now has four continents, including the Outlands, Kalimdor, the Eastern Kingdoms, and also Northrend. They've also added in 23 custom cultures, all with their own unique troop trees. Magic has been implemented in some ways, allowing you to cast fire spells as well as healing. We now have custom buildings. This includes both on the campaign map and also also in the battle maps. Undead units can now spawn and they won't consume any food or money so you can basically have an extremely elite undead army. Lords no longer respawn with full stacks so if you defeat an enemy lord they will go ahead and actually take a while to rebuild up. Over 200 new items. 10 playable races, all with their own new custom stats. And finally, over 23 cultures to go ahead and play and pick from. So let's start off by taking a look at some of the cultures you can pick from. There is currently a handful, as I said in the intro. There is over 23 that you can go ahead and play from. And these will basically dictate your sporting positions. As of right now, they haven't gone ahead and adjusted the actual bonuses for playing said factions. However, this, as I said, will adjust where you spawn. So for example, if I uh, pick for Horde, most likely I'm going to go ahead and spawn at Orgrimmar and vice versa for uh, for Stormwind. Maybe I also want to go ahead and pick the Scourge and that will go ahead and send me off into, you know, into Northrend and where the Lich King is. Once we've picked our kind of culture and our starting position, we'll then be able to go ahead and pick what race we want to be. This can be found right here. And as you can see, there are several to pick from. You can go ahead and play as one of the Viking Giants. You can play as an orc, and this does come in several different variants, so we do also have the fell orc as well. And again, this does look a little bit dodgy in this screen. However, in battle uh, and actually on the campaign map, it looks considerably better, so don't get too nervous if this does look a bit bumpy and stuff. It's more of so just the way it is predicted right here. We also have an elf as well, which again doesn't look great there, but when you go ahead and click female, uh, you can see the elf kind of really take firm. Some races are at the moment locked to male or female. And you can also adjust as well the, uh, the look of them. Again, as I said, when you go into the campaign map these races do look way better we also have the troll and again this is a good example of what a lot of the new fantasy units do actually look like they've kind of gone for the cartoony i guess world of warcraft style of of, of soldier and i think it turns out perfectly well uh, and there's there's tons i would say there's like 40 50 60 units which kind of have this type of aesthetic obviously don't look like a troll but the night elves look amazing like this and a ton of the other races do as well and you can go much darker if you want to again i'm not sure exactly exactly what the uh, the appropriate one is and again you can see the male and female uh, again hopefully we'll get different models of that we've got the dwarves themselves these I, I, I would say the dwarves are kind of one of the minor factions they have a lot of vanilla assets at the moment uh, but will again look a lot much better yeah that's just the same armor it's not culturally different we also have uh, yeah we have another I think these are the night elf factions right here uh, looking very good and as I said when they have all their armor on they look spectacular and then we are of course back to the humans so let's go ahead I don't know let's just go ahead and pick uh, one of the uh, yeah the night elves i guess they look really really cool let's go ahead and grab one of those okay and here we are on the campaign map as you can see the scale from this view is absolutely incredible if i go into the middle of the oceans you can see just the sheer sheer size of it we even go into the shattered islands as well over here looking absolutely awesome the way it is designed out uh, of course we have northrend up here and then the two vanilla places as well and as i mentioned each of these uh these settlements do have custom models depending on the faction right there which i think really adds a lot of immersive stuff to it so again if you go into raise the hill there's a lot more of the horde icons orgrimma right there and we even have the separate gates as well which look awesome and then of course over on the other side we have the city itself stormwind looking absolutely beautiful and this is going to represent a lot of the alliance settlement we even have settlements based around the trolls as well you can see their makeup kind of you know like the horde stuff but a little bit different to go ahead and give them a little bit of extra flavor uh as we go further up as well you can see uh, a lot of 
of the other uh, kind of terrain set up for Zolgrab. Uh, even going up as far as Lordaeron up in the north and Dalaran. Is this Dalaran pre-destruction? I, I can never remember my timeline for World of Warcraft. But all of it looking absolutely amazing. And these like small details and the effort they've gone in for this looks really, really good. Oh yeah, as well, you obviously have the Elijah ones up here in Silver Moon. I and mean, then if you go all the way over onto the other side, we do of course have the Night Elf areas as well, which is you know covered in these forests and huge trees. And uh, again, you can see some of their custom models. And uh, yeah, these little things go a long, long way, adding in a lot of flavor. And that's gonna be the same across the actual map itself. You can see some of the map, you know, is still requiring settlements and castles uh, and other stuff to be put in. But again, considering they had to rebuild a lot of this from scratch, you can see the areas where more work has gone in and they have kind of focused on that. And then stuff like this, you know, will be filled out with roads, I'm sure, and more kind of unique details. Again, I feel like there's maybe a settlement or two missing down here in the south. Uh, but still looking very nice. You can see some of the details as well that pops in and out. I mean, obviously in the north, we do have Northren uh, as well. And you can see the uh, the Ice Crown uh, Citadel right here as well. Uh, looking very nice. Uh, I believe, is this supposed to be Naxxramas? I always thought Naxxramas was down here from my uh, my time playing Classic once again. But yeah, maybe, maybe it moved for some way, for whatever reason. And a lot of these kind of castle gates as well looking very nice. Protecting these Citadels. You're going to see some fighting to obviously break through and challenge the Night King. And again, you've got some more stuff like here. And I love the way the models have gone ahead and built like these kind of, kind of settlements in the terrain. I think that adds a lot to it, kind of acting as these defensive fortifications. As I said, uh, the actual kind of aesthetic of all these custom races looks way better in game. And that's heavily down to the way that they've created armor. As you can see, if I take the armor off, you kind of got this base look right here. However, if I place the correct armor in, it goes ahead and changes it up with the better assets. And I think this is a smart way of doing things because not only does this great for NPC units, you have to worry about stuff like clipping. Uh, it does go ahead and just give you that clean aesthetic for the character. I guess a little bit less customization, but still a great nonetheless. And this is the same for basically all the kind of custom creatures in the game. If we go ahead and take a look at some of the other ones, there are base armors as well. If you want to go and create your kind of your own character right here, but again, you're going to have to find helmets and stuff to kind of really give yourself because that does look a bit funky. And I think this is the way it's supposed to be designed. We also got ahead and have like a ton of cool custom models like this as well for the Scourge, uh, which look great. You even have stuff like Burning Legion and as well so you can create some really cool stuff and the models have gone above and beyond with some of these armor pieces these armor pieces as well do go ahead and give you all head body leg and armor stats so you really don't have to go ahead and uh, worry about you know being under armor because you're definitely not going to be again you can see the uh, the horde warlock as well looking absolutely incredible this is you know i think a big big thing that they've done these, these models look great and i think they just fit so amazingly in the aesthetic they even have naggers as well in the mod which again holy my god that looks so good uh, and these do also have some custom animations as well you can kind of see them swaying side to side right now so they have implemented as much as they can some cool custom animations on them and hopefully, uh, you know, they, 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 I think they've done a good enough job, but it does look great. You even have lots of like abominations as well. Look at that hand coming out the back as well. Yeah, it's really incredible. Like this is stuff I have to go ahead and praise them on the most because yeah, they just look amazing, really nice stuff. And again, with all the, the different weapons and armors and stuff, uh, it really does immerse you in the world. Um, again, you can build your own equipment and stuff if you want to. Uh, this is, I guess, heavily for the AI more than anything, but looks really, really good nonetheless. They even have like rock giants as well. Uh, look at that. That's, you know, it's just so cool. So cool. And a little baby inferno as well from the Burning Legion. So that is just a handful of the incredible uh, kind of armors and units you can go ahead and pick from. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the actual units themselves. So we'll take a look at the Horde roster right now. Starting off pretty uh, basic, just a good old uh, Horde of Peon working the uh, working the mines and the wood chopping where you have to go and wake up. And then we have several roads from where we go down the infantry route going all the way up to the Horde Center. Centurion. On the right hand side, we have the Horde Shaman looking very nice. And then down the Archer line, we do also have the Horde Sentry. So a pretty kind of well-rounded roster right there for the uh, for the Orcs and the Horde. For the Night Elves, I think we have one of the uh, better setups right here. I really like this roster and the units look absolutely incredible. We go down, uh, starting off with just the followers. Down in the left hand side, we do have some very, very, very nice units right here. Uh, the, the Missile Cav looking yeah, deadly as anything. We go up all up to the Warden Hunters. 
the armor, the boobs. Whew. Uh, then on the right hand side, we have probably what they're going to be, you know, kicking ass with really nicely is going to be these uh, the sentinels, the archers, uh, an incredible missile skill as well. Uh, we also have the druids of the talent as well. I mean, look at that. That looks an incredible skim right there. Uh, druids of the claw, and then they finally upgrade into mountain giants, which we, we saw obviously in the preview right there. But a very, very nice setup and a roster. The trolls, of course, have a, a awesome setup uh, as well. And we, we've already taken a look at some of them with their high tier soldiers, the dire trolls. Yeah, very good. We've got some, uh, some javelin men and also some of the soul eaters as well. I believe these are actually a missile cab. So yeah, a very potent force. It's definitely worth Wild as well, taking a look at some of the Scourge units. They start off with just a Acolyte and then they di diverge into several different types. We have a Skeleton roster right here, just going up to Scourge Bodyguard. Which you can see takes aspects from a lot of the uh, the current races and armors of the world. Uh, and you build up quite nicely. We also have the uh, Dark Rangers as well. And I believe it basically looks like Sylvanas right tier uh, going up to the highest tier units. We also have the Ghouls, which we saw in the uh, inventory section. And then the Abominations again that I showed off. And then on the right hand side, we do also have Shades. Again, this looks awesome we go into banshees <laughs> again my face when the new jackie fish video drops and then finally into a dark knights and liches again the liches look beautiful I guess we'll also take a look at the uh, the Stormwind units as well with the Westfall Spearman Militia. Upgrading all the way up into the King's Honor Guard, looking awesome. Uh, and as I said, these are just a handful of the new units. I've shown off a ton uh, and all the custom armors look incredible. Uh, and yeah, as I said, this is just a, a handful of the units. There's plenty more scattered across all of the 23 different cultures you can play. Uh, there's unique regiments of renown you can pick up. Uh, and it's just overall a really, really fun uh, set up. As I said, also there are there's a ton of custom uh, units as well as armors for characters. Not only that, though, there are also much more improved bandit squads as well. So you're going to be finding a ton of uh, bandits with high party size, good units scattered around the map, giving you a challenge. So you're not only having to worry, uh, say, for example, about enemy lords and the wars you're fighting, but also the custom troops and skilled bandits that are still plaguing you. Right now, we do have the uh, kind of, I guess, these, these easy uh, traveling spaces right here. I guess think of these as either the air balloons or, you know, or even just be boats moving from place to place i imagine later on in development they will probably look to maybe make some more of a fast travel system so you have to go to orgrimmar to travel for the horde and stormwind uh, again for the alliance and it would be very cool as well if like the dark portal allowed you just to teleport you to a, a different continent later on down the line that would be uh, yeah super super fun to mess around with and very exciting Okay, so I'm in battle now, and as you can see, I have built one of the craziest armies. You can really see the diversity. Just basically trying to pick a bit of everything. We've got some giants right there, some men of Stormwind, some uh, some people from the Burning Crusade right there, some of the Night Elfy Bowmen back there, uh, the Abomination looking absolutely incredible, some of the Fell Orcs, uh, more Knights of the Talon back there. We've got some of the Vile Tormentors, even some artillery as well. Look at this as well. This is our eagle bolt thrower shooting out. We got one of these scourges. There's gonna be magic flying out as well as the archers now picking off. I mean, honestly, I feel pretty sorry for a lot of the units we have right there. Some of the scourge as well as the banshee, the naggers as well. If you can even advance, you can see the nagger kind of doing his animations as well. Our own archery coming off as well and firing, hitting the abomination, walking up. Uh, yeah, it's incredible. It really is seeing a lot of these units fight. I even got ahead and got frostmore here as well. Uh, a pretty gnarly sword uh, to go and climb in. Oh my god, my uh, skill with it is not great though. You can see some of the magic as well coming off the artillery hammering. It's incredible. It really is very impressive with exactly what they've done. And just imagine like full armies of these units looking great. We'll just charge in now. Let them clear up the uh, poor poor units. And that's just like a handful. There's tons more in here that I haven't even mentioned or looked at. So overall just a really, really impressive set of models that they've implemented. And I actually really like this new system of kind of uh, for the AI, at least having a lot of the implemented armor like this, I, I think you can probably get way more detail out of creating just an armor suit like this um, than anything else. But maybe I'll find a way to add it. And again, a lot of my mages back here as well. Uh, you can see my, my Shadow Council Warlock, my uh, my Edoron Warlocks, as well as some of the Hexes. Uh, it's all the magic units back here, as well as the artillery. And yeah, as I said, I think the armor looks great, actually, in a battle. 
So that is going to be it. That's going to be the brand new update. As you can see, it was an absolutely huge one for the World of Warcraft mod. I think now is definitely a good time to check it out. There is still plenty more to go up and kind of polish the mod in general, but it looks incredible. They've done a great job with the units and hopefully that kind of level of detail just continues and this can easily be one of the best mods for Bannerlord out there. Definitely go check it out. I'll leave a link to the Nexus page as well as their mod, uh, as well as their Discord page down below in the description. Be sure to go ahead and drop a like and a comment down below. Let me know where you guys want to go ahead and see in the next one. Obviously, subscribe for more Battle Lord content, and I'll see you guys in the next one.